Okay, three, two, one, Richard Nikolai, freetheanimal.com. And I thought I'd just do a little video out here in the provinces of the rural Isan provinces of Thailand, where I've been for a few days, headed back soon. But um, so we're in year two of this uh, thing that has everybody scared to death. Um, but I have some observations about it. Um, I think this probably holds globally, um, but certainly here in Thailand. Now, Thailand is a country of 70 million, about the same population as the UK, right? <clears throat> now, last year, by the end of, uh, by the end of 2020, um, there were roughly somewhere between three and 4,000 so-called cases. And of those, about 65 deaths. Now, I don't know, uh, I've, you know, one, one uh, speculation that you could make is that um, the death count vis-a-vis -vis the cases, or even the cases, um, were because uh, it looks like they really weren't testing people who weren't sick. <laughs> Imagine that, right? <clears throat> I mean, you can get a pre-screening screening for cancer uh, might be a good thing to do, especially for certain cancers, like for breast cancer in women or, or uh, prostate cancer in men. Um, but uh, why would you get a test if you're not sick uh, for something? So the um, so the the. The cases were like three to four thousand sixty five deaths. Um, maybe the death part is a function of of pathologists <clears throat> um, being careful or perhaps they were um, judging because it's a judgment call that takes pathological experience <clears throat> to actually pin cause of death on something unless you know, it's obvious like a gunshot to the head or, you know, you're mangled in a car accident or motorcycle accident or something like that. But with infectious disease, uh, Italian pathologists were showing this early on uh, last year. They said, you know, when we really studied uh, some of these uh, reports and autopsy reports, we can't really conclude a whole lot uh, definitively that it was the cause of this thing that scares everybody. Um, and uh, so, but what's happened here in Thailand since then is they developed their own, uh, what's called a rapid antigen test. I don't know anything about it. Um, I, I assume it's different than the antibody test that tells if if you're producing antibodies, this supposedly tells if you have an active infection and does it in a rapid fashion. I don't know, minutes to hours, I'm not really sure. Um, but ever since they developed their own, now the so-called cases are up to like, I don't know, 80,000, 60,000, 80,000, something like that. Yet the death rate has gone, the death, the total death count of 70 million people has gone from um, about uh, the 65 to I think 97 where we stand today. And so um, that's a bit, uh, a bit interesting. Um, that the, so the pathologists are still doing their, their rigorous work in terms of assigning cause of death, while at the same time, maybe there's money to be made from a, two, uh, from a new test that where all the money goes into Thailand for the costs of the test. And they have testing stations set up all over the place now. So, uh, you know, um, 
There's an old saying by uh, uh, Alexander Solzhenitsyn once wrote in Gulag Archipelago. He's like, it, he, it says, uh, where there are laws, there you will find crime. So uh, one could say, where there are tests, there you will find that thing that scares everybody, right? Um, so <laughs> it's quite interesting, but on a more practical level, um, <clears throat> I'm just noticing uh, a level of fatigue about the whole thing, right? Um, people are still obedient. They are Asians. And I, I, I'm sorry if I offend anyone, but in my experience as a Westerner, as a, as a uh, <laughs> you know, quote, uh, former land of the free um, uh, native, uh, I find, um, I find, find a, uh, the Asian mentality to be a little bit compliant, more so uh, towards authority. Um, and so uh, people still are going through the motions, but I sense, maybe I'm wrong, I sense that uh, there's, the fear is diminishing. You know, they will say, oh, COVID is very bad now, you know, because it's the case, like there was 1,500 new yesterday. Well, if you're testing everybody um, and they're not coming in to be tested because they're sick, it's just like, oh, I can get it. It's right there by the, they literally have them by the roadside now. Yeah, you can just stop someplace and get a test. And so, oh, wow, you've got COVID, uh, but I'm not sick. Uh, well, hmm. So, uh, so the thing is, is on, a, on practical levels like that, if you, if people are no longer that scared, I mean, my girlfriend this morning said, well, I'm not scared of it anymore. You know, I know last year she was, she was rather petrified of it. Um, so just her, that's one person in a year. Uh, <clears throat> so I don't know. I was at the market today, uh, a, a, a sort of um, Walmart sort of thing called Tesco Lotus here in, uh, in Thailand. And um, uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's the same, but not the same, if you know what I mean. Um, uh, I just don't sense, I, I sense people going through motions. I don't sense fear. Um, <clears throat> someone pointed out in some, in something I just posted to Instagram. Now I'm, yeah, I'm on Instagram. I post quite a lot there. Uh, pick memes and shit like that, mostly. Um, but, uh, said, you know, if, if, <clears throat> if, um, if people were really concerned about you not wearing a mask, if they, if they were genuinely concerned, I mean, for their safety, they'd stay away, right? What, the, what, what gets their panties in bunches is the fact that by not wearing one, um, you, you, you signal that you're disobedient, number one, and number two, you expose them as, you know, I don't know, take your pick, perhaps cowardly, perhaps stupid, scared little sheep, um, and they don't like that. It's possibilities. Um, and, you know, I'm kind of here and or there, here or there with whether masks are effective. I'm sure, I'm certain that masks can be effective if they're used properly like professionals do, like typically medical professionals or industrial workers, where you really have to keep out <clears throat> a certain fumes because they're toxic, right? Then you have serious mask usage and they're designed to be effective for that specific application. This cloth shit or bandanas, whatever, is pretty much a joke, right? And people are always touching them, handling them. You're not supposed to do that. Um, you know, so like say, say if it does stop, if you do have it and it stops the particles and then you're taking it on or off, well, if the virus particles are getting on your hands, you're touching things. Ah. <laughs> so it's really kind of silly. Um, 
but uh, ah, that's didn't want to didn't want to make this uh, overly long. I thought I'd just give a few observations. And and uh, America uh, itself is um, interesting study. I, I was explaining this to um, to some Thai people this morning that what's different is even though Thailand says okay, there's I think there's 70 provinces, 60, 70, something like that. Um, so not 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 altogether different from you know United States where the United where America the United States but there's you know 50 states but what's different here is while Thailand will say well we'll leave it up to the provincial governors um, in the US states have true uh, power that supersedes the power of the of the federal government there's a lot that states can do uh, to you know thumb their nose or their middle finger at the federal government. And so that was the intention. Uh, so uh, you ha you're going to have situations in America where bunches of states are going to say, hey, we got no restrictions, right? And uh, so people will migrate there over time should this persist. And, uh, they, and the our other argument is, well, the businesses will just do it. You know, the businesses will require masks or social distancing or a, or a passport, uh, so on and so forth. Well, that's an opportunity for competitors to say, hey, come to our place, come to our bar, come to our restaurant, come to our store. Uh, we have no requirements, right? And if the state doesn't mandate it, then boom, where do you think the business is gonna go? Okay, I think I've given uh, out uh, about what I was going to say. Thanks for listening. Uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. I'll probably post this in uh, some later blog post. Uh, just as an admin note, my blog, freetheanimal.com, is going to go to a membership site. Now, <laughs> so there will be, uh, so far planned, three levels of membership. The one is free and there'll be plenty of free content and then there'll be two premium levels but everybody will be a member um, in order to uh, access it. It, it that's just where everything has to go at this point you know okay that's it have a good day bye